One of the tools that we have in the Helix to create our tones with is one that is oftentimes either overlooked or some folks are a little bit intimidated by it and afraid of it because maybe they don't know what selections to make. Now, what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about a topic that I have talked about at length before in many videos, but I want to do a little twist on it today. And that is the ability to choose different microphones on our Helix stock cabs. I know there's the eternal debate that, you know, third party impulse responses or these new, these so called new tone matched impulse responses, which are nothing more than just normal impulse responses, are so highly superior in every way to the stock cabs. Now, again, I've spoken about this at length before as well. And I believe if you have a great sounding third party IR that does what you want, then, you know, there's your answer. But to discount the stock cabs, I think does a great disservice to the Helix and real ease of use of dialing it in. I know some folks seem to think you have to EQ them to death or process them a million different ways to get them sounding good, but that's just not the case. And I hopefully I'll demonstrate that today by not comparing some of the stock cabs to actual impulse responses, but actually to just the real thing recorded in the studio. I've been fortunate through the years to own a lot of very high-end studio equipment. I now have great relationships with some really great audio companies and I'm fortunate enough to have a nice selection of microphones here with me in the studio and I thought wouldn't it be fun to go through and make some recordings of my Rev Generator 100R amp that I love so much going directly into my Rev 212 cabinet which is loaded with vintage 30s mic it with a variety of microphones that are not the exact mics we have in the Helix but ones that are similar or comparable to some of the models and I'll document that as we go along. So here are some of the mics that I'm fortunate enough to own. I recently became aware of an amazing microphone company called Lewitt Audio and this here is their MTP 440 DM which is a dynamic instrument mic much in the same vein as say a Shure SM57 or Sennheiser MD421. So really nice mic and has quickly become one of my favorites for recording guitars when I need the sound of a great dynamic mic. Continuing on with Lewitt Audio, here is their LCT240 Pro, which is kind of their more larger diaphragm condenser microphone. I would maybe compare this to something like the 414 condenser we have in the Helix, which is a model of the AKG 414 condenser microphone. Again, continuing on with Lewitt Audio, this is their small diaphragm LCT 140 Air mic. This is beautiful on acoustic guitars, but works really nicely on electric guitars as well, as I will illustrate later in the video. I would kind of consider this similar-ish to the 84 condenser mic that we would have in our Helix stock cabs. This is a company that I really love, Warm Audio, and they kind of make recreations of old classic designs. So this is the Warm Audio W. WA 251 tube microphone and I was kind of comparing this to the 47 condenser inside the Helix. And last but certainly not least because this is probably my favorite class of microphones. This is the Cascade Fathead microphone which is a ribbon mic. I would compare this kind of like to the 121 ribbon or the 160 ribbon within the Helix. And I love this. This is my go-to mic when I start miking any amp I'm gonna record. And I might combine this with something like the MTP 440 DM just to get a nice combination of the fat and warmth with the nice bite that I can get out of a dynamic instrument mic. So you might ask why I'm showing you these. Well, I've done some recording samples of those of basically two different sounds. One kind of clean to edge of breakup tone from the green channel of my Rev Generator 100R and another of a heavier sound from the Rev Gen. I believe I used the third channel or the red channel on it. And I went through each of these mics, very carefully measured them to be the same distance and position on the speaker grill. So you could hear us go through the same tones, the same performance and hear what it sounds like to change out a real mic in a studio recording, hear the same performance with the mic at the exact same place on the speaker cabinet. So the only variable is the microphone and see if this compares to what you might have come across when switching mics in the Helix. Or maybe this will allow you now to not be afraid to change the mics in the Helix. I've heard from many, many folks over the years say, I don't even touch the microphone just because I put it on the 57 dynamic and I leave it alone. I, I'm, I'm a little afraid to move it around. So I think if we can get confidence that we know what 
changing the mic is going to give us, at least in the ballpark before we make the change, we can open up a lot of doors for ourselves and realize that we can dial in a lot of great tones by doing nothing more than just selecting a microphone that might be more suitable for what we're trying to attain. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you a bunch of sound files. Now, none of these are the Helix. This is all going to be the Rev Generator 100R amp. First, as I mentioned, with these same microphones, recording a clean to edge of breakup tone, then we'll go to some heavier tones with a different riff. And you can hear these seamlessly switch, reading on the screen what the description of the microphone you're hearing, keeping in mind they're all at this precise same place on the speaker cabinet, and the microphone that I would kind of compare them to that we have available in the Helix on our stock cabs. Not that they're the same thing. Just so you can hear what it's like in the studio to actually change real world mics around. After that, I'm going to do a really interesting comparison with these same sound files, but trying to compare them to the actual Helix stock cabs to see how the stock cabs actually measure up to a real world studio recording. What did you think? I, I hope that was interesting, at least to be able to actually hear the sonic differences between the different microphones, all other variables taken out. Same performance, same settings on the amplifier, the same positioning of the microphone measured very carefully. So they were at the same angle and position on the speaker cabinet so that we minimize as many variables as possible. So we heard just the change of the microphone. Were you surprised? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they're more similar than you thought. Maybe you heard more differences than you thought you would have. But I think we'll all agree that there were some pretty major differences between the microphones. Now, if you were just listening on an iPhone, you're probably going to have missed any of the differences. So I would recommend going back and listening on a really good set of headphones or a really good set of studio monitors and really focusing on the changes between how those microphones actually sound. Now, could we just pull up the Helix, pick an amp model that might mimic one of the channels I was using on my Rev generator. I, I chose the clean to edge of breakup tones. I was really like the way those were sounding. 
And I ended up settling on the Von 2 amp model. Now, I know it's a completely different amp model, but it's the one that kind of sounded closest to me to having that green channel on the Rev. Now, I know we have the Rev Gen and Rev Purple, but that's a totally different beast than the Rev Green channel. Hopefully, we get that in the Helix at some point. That would be wonderful. It's a beautiful channel on this amp with some great tones in it. But I found that the Vaughn 2 amp model worked absolutely beautifully to get somewhere in the ballpark of what I was getting out of a real-world recording with the Rev Gen 100. So all I did here is I put a Vaughn 2 amp model in with the stock cab that comes up with it when you load it. I dialed in the set that I thought got somewhere close to the same vibe as what the Rev Gen was giving me in those recordings. And then I simply changed the microphones to the microphones that I think are comparable to the ones that I've shown you. Now, there's no claim here that these are exactly the same sound. How could they be? Different amp, different mics, different cab. There's so many variables. But I was actually pretty surprised how close in the ballpark I was able to get them to the point where I could either kind of pick one or the other and be just as happy using them. So again, we're not comparing these stock cabs to impulse responses. We're comparing them to a real world studio recording using some really nice gear. Keep in mind, I've recorded all these beautiful mics through a really great signal chain of the Warm Audio WA273 EQ mic preamp and EQ. Really wonderful mic pre that's modeled after an old vintage Neve. And that was going into my Focusrite Claret Plus 4 Pre for the conversion. So it's a very nice signal chain that gives some very nice results. So without further ado, let's take a listen now to how those recordings stack up to my very fast tweaking of the Von 2 amp model into the stock cab it comes up with on the Helix. There's no other EQ and no other processing. I did add a dab of reverb to the Helix track simply because there was going to be a little bit of ambient reverb on the studio recorded sounds and I wanted to get it somewhere in the ballpark. So this is basically the Vontu amp model with just a touch of reverb compared to a real world studio recording using some very high end equipment. Right. What were your thoughts about that? Now, obviously, I said there's no claim here that these are exact. They were never meant to be. It would probably be impossible unless we use some sort of tone matching EQ match, which we could have done. And that's really all any of these tone matched IRs are, is just tone matching to a real world recording like that. It's really not that big a deal and then making an IR of it. So really, without going outside of the Helix stock cabs, I was able to probably in under five minutes get some tones that I thought were actually comparable. Uh, you know, somebody might prefer one or the other. And if we did a blind test with this, we might find that uh, we'd be surprised by what our choices were. I would probably guess some folks would 
end up preferring the real recordings and some folks would end up preferring the helix tones and if anybody has an interest in me doing a blind test like that it might be kind of fun let me know in the comments and i can do it anyways i thought that would be a fun video for those folks who maybe were a little afraid to dive into the world of tweaking their mics and their stock cabs if you're one of those people and you always just automatically go to a third party ir you might be very pleasantly surprised with the number of different tones available right there by simply choosing a different microphone and then obviously we have the ability to move at different distances as well, which can also shape the tone, which is what a lot of my other videos have been about. I hope that that was enjoyable. This was just meant to be a fun little look at comparing the Helix stock caps to a real world situation. And I hopefully it opened some folks' eyes and maybe you'll now try to mess around a little bit more with some different mics. We have a nice selection of them within the Helix. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Please like the video and share it with anybody who you think would get some enjoyment or use out of watching it. And also please subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back really soon with some more. Thank you guys again so, so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.